Sometimes, I'm not sure that I'm capable of doing something until I'm already doing it. We all have examples of that within our own lives. Things like acing that test, earning that promotion, or the one that truly terrifies and strikes fear into the heart of all of us adults, getting virtually anything done at the DMV. Oh, gosh. But in all seriousness, at times, these things can feel unattainable to us. But maybe they shouldn't. My name is Paniz Oyai, and I'm here today to demonstrate to you why you're capable of more than you think. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, great. Another one of those motivational speeches that sounds so nice, but ultimately does nothing. But like you, I understand how difficult it is to summon the courage we need to achieve our dreams. And so today, I'm going to do something just a little different. Today, as a longtime student of psychology, I'm going to offer you a tool. We call this conceptual tool Mind Over Matter, and I'm going to use it today to help you harness your very own power. Now, we'll be starting off with a couple of examples from that beautiful science of the mind that we call psychology. Next, I'll take you through the findings of those examples. Why does it matter that there's a connection between our minds and our bodies? What does the connection of mind over matter mean about ourselves, about each other, and about the world around us? And finally, I'll tell you about how you can apply the concept of mind over matter to your lives and the lives of those around you. Now, the first thing I need you to remember, and this is really important, don't let it go, is that mind over matter is absolutely everywhere. It is in our daily lives, in the air that we breathe and the light that we see. Don't believe me? Let's give it a shot. So on the screen before you, you'll see what's an illustration of the Basold effect, first coined by Wilhelm von Basold. It's a pretty simple picture, isn't it? You have two main objects on the screen. One is a background. And as you can see, it is much darker on one side, my right, than it is on the left. It's a gradient, easy peasy. In the middle of this background is a rectangular bar. And that rectangular bar also looks like a gradient. It is much lighter on my right side than it is on my left. It's an inverse of the background. Now, I know you're seeing the same thing that I'm seeing. You're asking yourselves, why is she explaining this? I can see very clearly what's going on. But if you'll just give me a moment, I want you to look very closely at what happens next. Because when I remove the background, you'll see that this rectangular bar in the middle is actually one solid color. It's not a gradient at all. It is a solid shade of gray. Let's try that again. Now you see it, the gradient, and now you don't. All right, let's try something else out. This is another one that is very, very popular in terms of its fun cognitive illusion test. This is an illustration of the checker shadow illusion coined by Edward Adelson. This is also a fairly simple picture. As you can see, there are two squares marked on this checkerboard. One is marked with the letter A, and the other one is the letter B. A, as you can see just as plainly as I can, is much darker than B. You can probably guess what I'm going to do next. If I just remove everything else, you'll see that A and B are the exact same color. 